Satya, Satya Narayan, final year MBA student, and this is uh, Sona, and we are here to have a case presentation. So we will begin with the case. 26 year old Mrs. Anuja, who is a homemaker by occupation, residing in Kollam uh, coming under the lower middle class uh, socio economic status by modified Kupiswami scale, who is a primary gravida, having a gestation age of 37 weeks. LMP is 16 to 2023. EDP is 7 12 2023. She came with chief complaints of bilateral swelling in lower limb for 15 days and headache since 5 days. History of present illness the patient was apparently normal 15 days back, after which she had developed swelling in lower limbs since 15 days. It presents throughout the day and not relieved on resting overnight or on limb elevation. History of headache since 5 days that is localized to frontal and occipital region, not associated with vomiting. No history of epigastric pain or bloody omission. No history of reduced urine output, no history of hematuria, no history of pain abdomen, no history of leaking or bleeding per vagina. History of present pregnancy. First trimester, natural conception. Pregnancy was confirmed by doing urine pregnancy test after 10 days of missed periods. Dating scan was done and was corresponding. Folic acid tablets was taken. First dose injection TT was taken. Routine investigations were done and found to be normal. No history of burning intuition, no history of fever with rash, SFC vomiting, EC fatigability, no history of pain abdomen, no history of spotting or bleeding per vagina. Second trimester, quickening felt at 5 months, anomaly scan was done and found to be normal. Injection TT second dose was taken, oral glucose tolerance test was done and it was found to be normal. Iron and calcium tablets were taken, no history of nausea, vomiting. No history of headache, blood in omission, pedal edema. No history of pain abdomen. No history of leaking or bleeding per vagina. Third trimester. Fetal movements were perceived, continued to take iron and calcium tablets, who came with complaints of headache and trach speed since five days. No history of pain abdomen, leaking or bleeding, but no history of use, use of any contraceptives. Past history. Not a known case of diabetes mellitus, TB, asthma, epilepsy. No history of previous blood transfusion, no history of recent surgery. Family history, no relevant family history. Personal history, the patient is having a mixed diet, sleep and appetite being normal, bubble and bladder movements being normal, and no addictive habits. General examination, patient is conscious and oriented to time, place and person. Vitals, pulse 82 beats per minute, blood pressure 146 per 96 millimeter mercury, Respiratory rate 16 beats per minute, no pain and decrease, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, bilateral treating edema present up to the ankle, height 149 cm, pre pregnancy weight 75 kg, present weight 82 kg, weight gain during pregnancy 7 kg, BMI 28.6 kg per meter square, breast examination normal, spine examination normal, thyroid examination normal, systemic examination. Serious S1, S2 here, no murmurs. RS, normal vesicular death sounds here, presence of bilateral air entry present, no added sounds, sinus, no focal neurological deficit. Periabdomen examination, inspection, abdomen longitudinally distended, flanks, will, umbilicus, central and aorter, linear nigra and stria gravidarum present, no dilated veins, hernia offices intact, palpation, no local rise of temperature or tenderness. Uterus corresponds to term size, like an adequate. Fundal tip, broad, soft, independently non palatable structures, well, which is suggestive of breach. Lateral grip, on right side, multiple knob like structures, well, which is suggestive of limbs. Left, uniformly resistant curved structure, well, which is suggestive of fetal spine. Pelvic grip, first pelvic grip, hard or palatable mass, suggestive of fetal head. Second pelvic grip, fingers are converging. Auscultation, fetal heart rate, 136 beats per minute. Head along left spinal umbilical line. Provisional diagnosis a 26 year old primary gravida at 37 weeks of gestation with a single line pregnancy, longitudinal line, cephalic presentation, head not engaged, not in labor, came with complaints of bilateral swelling in the lower limbs, which is associated with headache and was diagnosed as a case of preeclampsia. Uh, let's hold on to the gestation form. Uh, I think there's presented now nicely. There's certain things that I like to talk to you about. One, 
this way that you have complained of. I understood to ask for your presentation that you have tried to differentiate it from physiological edema. Am I correct? Physiological edema? Uh, are you clear on? Can you just enumerate the points for it? Physiological edema, it will be relieved on rest time and limb elimination, but in pathological edema, it cannot be relieved on That's one. Time. Tell me the second point. Tell me the second point. And after that, that is important. It will be confined to what? It will be confined to? Ankle. Why ankle? Why ankle? It doesn't have ankle and leave it there. There has to be a reason. Dependent portion. Dependent portion. Uh, yeah, anybody want to Anybody answer? wants to answer? Tell the time, let decide who answers. If you're talking about a dependent portion, na bacha. So for dependent portion, you know, you have to understand that if a patient is lying down or dependent portion becomes sacral. So that means that uh, you are saying that uh, the sacral edema is going to be a How to understand? There has to be a pathology that defines. For edema, we have an interplay of various forces. What are those? Okay, you have an oncotic osmotic pressure, you have hydrostatic pressure, and you have gravity. These three things, four things are uh, at play right now. So, what about uh, physiological edema pregnancy? It is confined to? Yeah? The point is that this gravid uterus is actually pressing upon uh, the Retroviruses right now. So aorta will have an effect. Aorta has got good pressure. So it will keep on pumping with that. What about the anterior vena cava? No, that one is a helpless one. So that becomes compressed. So what happens? The edema is going to get confined to lower limbs. Yes. So it is confined to the lower limbs. So that is the point that you need to understand. If it goes even to sacrum, it becomes pathological. Now, another point of interest is that physiological edema may only develop when the gravid uterus is sufficiently enlarged to compress, I should not call it compress, to press upon the great vessels. So, it is only in the second half of second pregnancy, uh, of the second trimester onwards that you have that. Okay, so one point of clarity there. Then, uh, let's come by to uh, any idea regarding prediction of pre eclampsia, how it can be done? Any idea? Increased soluble elements like tyros and tyros and increased elderly and decreased the placental growth factor and vascular. Uh,
See, the thing is that uh, 140 by 90 single location that you are telling me is not sufficient enough. And if you are trying to uh, tell me out as per definition, what I am understanding is that you are making clear that it is after 20 weeks she has been diagnosed and that is why you have kept her diagnosis for three weeks. Am I correct? Yeah. So what I am trying to make you understand is fine. You understood that it is beyond 20 weeks, but the time when it was first diagnosed or it was identified that she started to have or she is starting to have a raised blood pressure is significant again. So her antenatal visits prior to the one that you have had here are also carrying a significance in this case. Now you understand my point. So shall we move ahead to another? Another point that I have to say is, what do my PGs say regarding the sleep pattern being normal in this case? What do you think? Does sleep let you have it? It usually gets affected. And more the severity, the more affection that you find. And maybe prior to headache or blurring of vision, you might uh, find sleep disturbances as uh, the factors that might be altered. So, um, if we are going to talk about uh, pre eclampsia understand the symptoms are not very dramatic always. There might even be subtle symptoms and all you are getting is a raised blood pressure. So, do pay attention because this is one killer disease that we have right now. Okay. So, once you have formulated a diagnosis, I'd like you to proceed on with the management of, her, of this lady. Investigations. Okay. So, what about the renal function test? You found it normal or is there something abnormal here? Did you identify anything abnormal? No. Okay. Liver function test, anything abnormal? No. Okay. Hemoglobin from this Okay. That is 7.8 per fine chalo or anything else? Even an Two plus, okay. Okay. So, if we are going to talk about the investigation part and if we go through the list, what all do we have additional in, and in comparison to any other identity case? So, you have to go for liver function test, you have to go for kidney function test and you have to go for? Hmm? Okay. Or? Endoscope. Or? Doppler you can Or? Or okay. fetal surveillance, sample of three Fetal surveillance. Okay. Guys, we just remembered. Um, we just uh, you know recapitulated or remembered or uh, reiterated or something that DIC is common in three conditions. One of which was. Can I wait for her to go in spontaneously? Okay. 
Okay, guys. So uh, the point is that we are having a case in which a raised blood pressure is there. She's not on any. This is a late onset uh, pre-eclampsia yeah. that we have. No complication except for two plus um, urine albumin. Fetal growth is not altered. Probably, you told me that is your term and every feature is corresponding to. Can I wait for you know start on with an antihypertensive, wait for her to have a spontaneous labor, or keep a watch on her blood pressure, how exactly she is coming up with rest and things on. So that is one point. Okay, termination pregnancy is something that has to be done as a UG. Please be clear in your mind. If it is a term pregnancy, there is a raised blood pressure. You need to yeah. So um, once uh, we are going to have a case, let's just. Uh, point of five things with this particular aspect. One thing that I do not want the maternal or fetal condition to do it. So I'm going to keep a maternal and fetal uh, surveillance in hand. I'm going to find out whether anti adding an anti alone will take care of the things. While at the same time I take care that she does not progress with her disease. That means no impending features of pregnancy, no deterioration, further deterioration of the blood pressure that she has, or the condition of mother or fetus. Okay, so for that, I am going to keep her under observation that she's going to stay with me. This is going to be a safe confinement at hospital. I am I might add up a bit of an anti hypertensive. Check it up, let her go till term. If she uh, spotting this letter to labor, then well, fine, otherwise it means. So I'll agree with your point. Okay? And in case there is any obstetrical indication, then I'll go for a sudden section. The problem or complication that can happen is definitely the severe component and it can see. So with that we end.